Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We are learning CTS related concepts and we have already visited few basic concepts of CTS such as CTS targets and building of tree. And in this lecture, let us start understanding about CTS exceptions. Previously, we have already discussed these configurations of CTS. And in previous video, we have already seen that H bridge is most commonly used strategy for building the clock tree. And with increasing complexity, the combination of H bridge with other type of structures is preferred on base of case to case basis. Let us remove half portion of H for writing down notes for CTS exceptions. By exceptions, it means that CTS will not treat that portion of design normally, but it will treat that portion as an exception. There are different exceptions and let us understand them one by one. Let us understand the concept of float pins first. So let us take an example to understand this concept. Uh, let us say that we have a flop and a RAM IP connected like this. And let us say that we have taken the target latency from this clock source to this point of clock pin. We take around 2 nanoseconds. So that is the target taken by the, let's say, from the specifications. So tool will take around 2 nanoseconds of target to reach to this clock pin. And let's say is if it has to balance the clock pin latency so that will be our target latency for all the clock pins and then in that case let us say in this hierarchy there is a ram from where we have a connection to the clock pin like this if that is the case in that case let's say that in this hierarchy we know that our design requirement is such that we know that from this point so let's say that this is your point a so from this point a to reach to this clock pin point b it will always be taking around 200 picosecond this is the design requirement so in that case 200 picoseconds is nothing but 0.2 nanoseconds if you know that this is the case that 0.2 nanosecond is always going to be consumed in this, this case. So what we can do is this pin, we can make this as a float pin. And this float pin will be taken like this, uh, such that when the balancing is there, we have to reach by for this point A, we should be taking not entire 2 nanoseconds because in that case we will be breaching 2 nanosecond target because total when it reaches the clock pin of this RAM IP it will be taking 2 plus 0.2 that will be 2.2 nanosecond to reach to B if we are taking normal case but if we are taking an exceptional case and we tell the tool that you take only around 0.2 picoseconds inside this so you have only 1.8 nanoseconds left out in that case your A will be taking around 1.8 nanoseconds and inside that design you have 0.2 nanosecond already consumed then total latency will be reaching till b pin of this clock will be 2 nanosecond only and that way we can meet our target so this is a concept of float pins now let us understand the concept of stop pins so stop pins are end points of clock tree that are used for delay balancing so let us take an example where we have one clock end point so this is your end point clock pin right this is end point clock pin end point clock pin is also called in technically speaking it is called as sync pin and all sync pins are by default the stop pins so sync pin is nothing but your stop pin this is by default and this is also called as implicit because it is already understood by the tool wherever the clock pin attribute is set that would be implicitly stop pin there can be another case where based on your design to design you can have different stop pin that would be you are specifying that as a user or a designer so you will be calling it as explicit stop pin because we are explicitly mentioning it in the specification so it is explicit stop pin that could be a case such like where you have an end gate and after that you have a, some combinational logic going on and then you have somewhere further in the design going on and your requirement is that your clock should stop here for delay balancing so in that case you can specify this as your stop pin and that we can set in the tool so 
in fusion compiler we have is stop pin as an attribute which can be set to true in that case it becomes your stop pin and tool will have to balance the delays between this pin and this clock pin if they are on the same level of hierarchy next point that we need to understand is exclude pin so exclude pins are those pins which we exclude them while doing the skew analysis so you can write that as a note that we exclude such pins we exclude such pins while doing skew analysis so in the skew balancing these pins will not be counted and we explicitly have to specify such pins and how do we do that so let us take an example that this is our one pin and this is our b pin so in this between this two pins the tool will be balancing the skew let us say that there is a third pin which is also going on and we want to exclude it from the analysis what will happen is we have already understood in the skew that while doing the skew balancing tool will insert the buffers in the tree like this so this is one buffer which tool has inserted with the intention that it has to balance the skew for this particular branch of h tree now what happens is if we specify this particular pin as a exclude pin then it will be excluded from skew balancing but very important point to be noticed here is that it can be excluded from skew balancing but cannot be excluded from drc drv but not it will not happen so tool will still continue to balance drvs but what that that means is that still the trans that is transition and capacitance or loading or fan out such things will still be considered for balancing that means tool can still insert the buffer if there is any tran or cap violation or fan out violation is there even though we have specified it as exclude from skew balancing but if there is a violation of skew or if any skew related concept is there tool will not consider that into the analysis last but not the least we also define some don't touch pins and don't touch nets in the clock tree so what that means is in this example if we take sometimes if we do not want this portion of tree to be balanced or this pin should not be touched for balancing that time we can specify don't touch attribute on this particular pin and similarly we can also specify don't touch on a particular portion of the net for balancing so let's say if you specify don't touch on this particular net then this portion of net which uh, which can be a segment of uh, total nets which is like this it is going so this particular net will not be touched for mod modifying the clock tree so this is also very important that we can specify like this these are all the important cts exceptions that we discussed today we will come up with more concepts in further videos and please do like share and subscribe to the channel don't forget to give your important feedback in the comment section thank you